subscribe now. EU debates. Thank you very much. I also want to welcome Prime Minister Shmiha. And first, uh, of course, we need to applaud the resilience of the people of Ukraine. And of course, uh, for the resistance the people of Ukraine and its state is showing. And not only that, but the state continues to function uh, under this huge pressure uh, the war is putting uh, Ukraine under. Uh, we have, I think, covered many, many topics. Uh, all of them have been listed. Let me just grab a few uh, for you. Uh, we're pleased, of course, first of all, uh, that Ukraine now is an EU candidate country. Uh, this has created already a positive momentum we see in the country for advancing the reforms, despite all the, the challenges existing. And it is therefore very important that uh, Ukraine has taken a keen interest in this, but also that it pursues uh, this keen interest uh, throughout the process. Of course, the progress of Ukraine towards the EU will require time and serious efforts. And at this stage, we recommend uh, Ukraine to focus on the implementation of the seven steps uh, foreseen in our opinion and confirmed uh, by the European Council, uh, meaning strengthening the rule of law, fight against corruption and money laundering, as well as ensuring the rights of uh, persons belonging to national minorities as key elements in this uh, context. Of course, Needless to say that you can count on our support and our uh, engagement. And, of course, uh, we are ready to follow this very, very closely uh, with our friends in Kiev and to help the country uh, to move forward on its uh, European path. As the High Representative uh, already mentioned, our bilateral agenda has advanced significantly since the last Association Council, despite the war and Russian aggression against Ukraine. Uh, for example, on trade relations, earlier this year, the EU has taken an unprecedented decision uh, by adopting full liberalization of all outstanding duties under the Deep and Comprehensive uh, Free Trade Area, the DCFTA, uh, also known. Moreover, the application of safeguard and anti-dumping measures on imports uh, of Ukrainian steel has also been suspended. We expect these measures to boost the existing trade flows from Ukraine to the EU. Ukraine's association to the Digital Europe program is another good example, uh, where strong bilateral cooperation and an important step in integrating Ukraine into the EU's digital single market has been made. We have also discussed Ukraine's ongoing engagement uh, in implementing its commitments related to the telecommunication services sector, uh, which, if fully met, can lead to an internal market treatment for this sector. I would also particularly like to mention the roaming issue, which was also picked up by the Prime Minister, where we are now exploring a legally sound options uh, for, the, for associating Ukraine fully uh, within our roaming area to enjoy the same lowered roaming tariffs between the EU and Ukraine. Uh, of course, uh, not only for the markets, but also for the people to be able to maintain contact. We have also recalled uh, the signature earlier this summer of the temporary road transport agreement, which helps to ease the difficult situation in the transport sector. Of course, all these steps put together gradually and surely bring our economies and societies even closer together. Today we have also discussed uh, our ongoing support to Ukraine, which now is at 9.5 billion euros since the start of the war by Russia. And Ukraine has urgent short-term financial needs, and we're working hard to advance as quickly as possible on the disbursement of the remaining assistance of the 9 billion euros macrofinancial assistance decided uh, by the European Council. I'm also pleased that today we've been able to sign, uh, together with the government of Ukraine, a budget support program of half a billion euros uh, in grants, and this should help uh, 
the people of Ukraine uh, when it comes to the, challenge, the, the key challenge of housing, of restarting education and schools, and of course uh, also to help the internally displaced and the refugees uh, in Ukraine. And I do hope that with this uh, we're also contributing in a significant way to consolidate the agriculture sector in Ukraine. In addition uh, to the urgent needs, of course, we have discussed longer-term perspectives, namely the recovery and rec uh, reconstruction after the war. And we are committed to support these efforts of Ukraine. And we are ready to co-lead uh, with uh, the Ukrainian authorities the reconstruction platform, while, of course, uh, counting on the support of our partners as donors uh, to come around and contribute uh, to this effort. In conclusion, I want to, of course, reiterate, as it was already uh, done by uh, High Representative, our unwavering support, uh, the sovereign and independent Ukraine, and we support the territorial integrity of Ukraine, and it is very clear that Russia needs to respect international law and it, it has to immediately stop all aggression and return to its borders. Our objective is to help Ukraine emerge stronger and more resilient from the devastation of this invasion. Ukraine's future is in the EU. Thank you.